What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy, Dylan, and uh, I got a couple things I want to talk about today. Um, one involving a little bit more of Xavier Howard drama, unfortunately. Um, although, to be fair, it doesn't seem like as of right now it's turning it in, into anything, you know, big. Uh, he just happens to be, as of right now, uh, connected in name to something, uh, which we'll get to in just a second. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit more about the Deshaun Watson situation as there is a report um, that is relative to that. So uh, let's see. First, let's talk about the Xavier Howard thing. So there are uh, multiple sources reporting on this. Xavier Howard declining to speak with police regarding shooting at former agent's home. Uh, so let's see, police in Dunwoody, Georgia, are looking to speak with Miami Dolphins cornerback Xavier Howard in connection with an unsolved shooting that took place at a home owned by his former agent. So, uh, obviously, Xavier Howard's, um, you know, being contacted by the police. This shooting apparently occurred in Georgia at his former agent, Demario Bilbo, uh, Demarius Bilbo's house. Um, yeah, so let's see. Barry Jackson, Barry Jackson, Adam H. Beasley, and David Oval of the Miami Herald indicated that Howard's name appears as a person of interest in the shooting and disturbingly noted that one round uh, pierced the playroom of a child. So it looked like there was somewhat of a, it, it appears to be some kind of like drive-by-ish type shooting that occurred. The home is owned by sports agent Demarius Bilbo, who represented Howard until the two parted ways over a business dispute sometime after October, Jackson Beasley and Oval wrote. Now, you know, this is obviously just speculation, but my guess is, is that may have something to do with it, right? I mean, at, at the very least, I mean, if anybody ever watches like cop shows, there's motive there, right? So, you know they had some to dis some kind of dispute and then obviously he fired his agent so uh you know anyway um you know i mean it could be inconsequential it could be absolutely nothing we don't know and and so far howard's not actually in any trouble so we'll see how it plays out i mean there are some things about this including that right um you know including that there is potential motive um you know, and then some other things that make it a little suspicious, but at the same time, he apparently wasn't even there. So, you know, anyway, let's continue on. Howard's name is in the June 29th police report about the shooting. So is Ray Gibson, 29, Angelica Brown, 27, whose car was spotted at the crime scene, and Leonardo Ken Underwood, 45, a Howard associate who appeared to be in contact with Gibson multiple times on the day of the attack before it happened. Gibson and Brown shared an address, according to the police report, which misspells Howard's first name as Xavier. Uh, shocker, because police are pieces of shit, and they're probably all white people and don't really care that his name is Xavier, not Xavier. And they think, oh, well, all black people. Whatever. Anyway, sorry, side note. Uh, cameras and the development identified a vehicle registered to Brown as entering the subdivision during the time the alleged shooting happened. Dunwoody, Georgia police on multiple occasions have requested an interview with Howard, but he has declined, according to a source with direct knowledge of the investigation. The most recent was request was made in the past few weeks. So that's also probably not a good thing that he's declining because that's also more reason to suggest or to suspect rather that he could be involved in some way. I mean, even if he wasn't there or, or at least even knew about it, right? He might not have even been involved. He might not have, you know, commit the shooting. He might not have been there, but he might have known about it. And so, you know, even the information, but the fact that he's not talking to them now, look, I mean, you know, in his mind, he could be like, oh, well, I didn't do it. So there's no reason, you know, I don't know anything about it. So there's no reason, you know, and that's fair, honestly, like, you know, if it was me, and if I was being accused of something that I didn't know anything about or whatever, I'd be like, bro, look, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Get out of here. And, you know, I'm not going to keep talking to you about, like, if the, for me, if they contacted me the first time, that's what I would tell them. I'd be like, what? Like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. Like, it wasn't me. It wasn't there. We fucking whatever. And then I would leave it at that. And I wouldn't want to talk to him again either. But unfortunately, it does 
cause additional potential concern and and problems because you know i mean i know how the world works and in those circumstances those are the types of things that don't get the authorities off your back but in fact keep them more on your back and and keep their attention on you and the months since the sh especially when they don't actually know who's done it yet and uh you know they haven't figured it out so in the months since the shooting, police have been unsuccessful in attempting to interview Howard, though Jackson, Beasley, and Oval noted that a representative of the cornerback issued a denial that Howard uh, has any connection to the shooting. Xavier was not involved in this incident, and there is no evidence to suggest otherwise, said sports attorney Darren Heitner. Uh, thus far, the NFL has refused to comment on the situation. Real quick on that. Now, that very well may be true. Like I said, there's it, it does seem as if Howard wasn't there. The police report does not indicate as if he was present uh, during the shooting and so on and so forth. So that may be the case. Um, I just want to note that it wouldn't be the first time that a lawyer has lied and said his client was innocent. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't mean that Howard is guilty. It's just lawyers. <laughs> so... You know, and that statement was very, very simple, very generic, you know, um, and so, you know, there is still fucking, you know, some probability, I suppose, that he was involved or knows something about it or whatever, but it also doesn't say that he was guilty. I, it's just a little side note. The timing of the shooting and Howard's subsequent squit, uh, squit, split from Bilbo will no doubt spark rumors, though Howard is current, and that's why I said he has a potential motive there, though Howard is currently more focused on trying to have his current contract with the Dolphins renegotiated. Let's also note, though, that Dolphin, or Dolphin, that H Howard does have another incident in which he got arrested for, I think somewhat luckily, had the charges dropped, and I say luckily because he's a wealthy individual who is also a superstar on a football franchise so my guess is something um uh something had to do or or his the his innocence in that situation probably had something to do with that um because you know the girl his girlfriend or whatever just like randomly decided to drop all charges and i don't know it was strange but anyway that's also additional context just in the sense that you know now that this is not the first time now that uh Xavier Howard has had some sort of run in with the law and so that is unfortunate and so look at the end of the day the reason why it's unfortunate and the biggest reason for me why I'm actually even talking about it is is because unfortunately either you know as time goes on and especially you know as more of these kinds of things crop up when I evaluate the Dolphins situation and specifically when it comes to Howard, unfortunately at this point I see a higher probability that in the near future he will not be a Miami Dolphin anymore. Now I hope that's not the case and there's definitely significant probability that he will remain a Miami Dolphin, but there is significant probability that he won't. The reason being is, is you know, it, um, his legal issues could have a, uh, uh, could play a factor in that right um especially as more of them continue to come up i mean this is a completely separate incident now but also a violent incident right the last one was him assaulting his girlfriend and um this one is you know relative to a shooting so um you know with them piling up and getting you know more severe in fact uh you know that could be a concern. Of course, we don't know his actual involvement in this, but that could be a factor. And then, of course, you know, this drama going back and forth with him wanting a new contract. Are the Dolphins going to be willing to give him that? Do they have the cap space to do that? Et cetera, et cetera. So, unfortunately, um, you know, there are multiple uh, data points regarding, you know, the Miami Dolphins um, and Xavier Howard specifically uh, that suggest there is a substantial probability that he will not be a Miami Dolphin for, you know, too much longer. Uh, you know, another year or two, maybe. Um, again, I hope that is wrong, and, you know, we will have to wait and see how that plays out, but there are definitely some factors that could lead to that as a result. Um, all right, so now that we are done with that let's go ahead and move on to the next report and the next dis topic of discussion which is more related to Desha deshaun watson and the rumors there 
And frankly, this bit of information is not really anything new. Um, you know, and I say that because it's not something that um, would figure to be unexpected, right? And as a matter of fact, I, I actually would figure it to be extremely expected. But, you know, as things do heat up and as, as you know, more and more information comes out, more and more context, it, you know, it does keep the, the wheels of this whole thing, uh, you know, churning. So Deshaun Watson trade rumors, Dolphins interested if Texans make quarterback available. So just a real quick, quick recap, Deshaun Watson is super upset with the Texans, doesn't want to be there. Mostly because um, he realized that the organization is racist. Uh, I think he's going to realize that um, all of the organizations in the NFL are run by racist people, um, i.e. the owners. But anyway, I, I digress. So he was upset with the Texans in large part because uh, he didn't feel like they were doing anywhere near enough for social justice issues to be a little bit more accurate <clears throat> and uh, clear. And also because they did not consult him when hiring their new GM, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so anyway, he wants out. He said he's not going to play for them. He said that the Dolphins or Jet and Jets are, you know, like at the top of his list. Since uh, that initial report, it looks like the Dolphins are his preferred of the two spots. Even though there were at one, there was at one time an indication that the Jets might be. As of right now, it looks like the Dolphins are his top spot. Um, Obviously, there are going to be lots of teams that are going to be interested in him and are going to, you know, field calls to the Texans uh, in order to attempt to get him. That is also a fact. And then it is also a fact that up to this point, the uh, Texans have said that they are not going to be trading Deshaun Watson. However, Deshaun Watson really has all of the leverage in this situation. Yes, there are repercussions he could face like fines and, and loss of pay if he like, you know, doesn't show up uh, to camp, which I'm not even uh, quite convinced that there's going to be a camp this year, uh, much like last year, but we'll have to see. Uh, but anyway, that's another topic. Um, but, you know, if he didn't show up, if he didn't play right, he could certainly be fine. But he can also tell them, look, I'm just going to retire. You know, and then he would, no matter what, though, Deshaun Watson knows another team is going to sign him and pay him big money. So he doesn't give a shit, right? It's well worth it to him to lose out on his contract with the Texans because he knows that he's going to get a big contract with someone else no matter what. So he has 100% all the leverage. The Texans can play big ball all they want right now because they're still early in the process. Free agency hasn't even actually begun yet. And so they can continue to play hardball for now. But ultimately, my guess is, is Deshaun Watson is going to leverage his way out of Houston. Um, again, we obviously have to wait and see how that plays out. But my guess is, is he's going to do that. Now, having said that, is, is then where does he go? Before we get into this, this report, where does he go? Right? Again, many teams are going to be calling. The, the Dolphins are expected to be one of them. And if I'm keeping it real... I think the Dolphins are going to be the spot. Now, obviously, there are, are many factors, factors in which I probably don't have, you know, any insight on that I'm not privy to that can certainly sway this. I guarantee that's the case. However, with the available information that I have, and the reason why I say that is because, look, again, one, I mean, the Dolphins are at the top of his list, certainly the top two, if not the top spot. So there's that. I fully expect him to push himself out of, um, you know, uh, Houston because uh, of the situation. I don't think the Texans have any control over that, and I think he will push himself out. Uh, he does have that no trade clause, which means he also has the power to veto the trade location, the team, the destination, right? So he pretty much gets to dictate which team he goes to. Not only that, but the Dolphins have the most draft capital to give up or the most resources rather to give up not only that but between the jets and the dolphins tua i believe is the better quarterback prospect between him and sam darnold um and so look man and and if i'm keeping it real i think that the team that has the highest probability of pulling off a trade uh is the dolphins i think they have the highest probability the highest likelihood and you know 
should De Deshaun Watson become available and should the Texans agree to trade him, you know, and, and I do it with the air quotes and the slight, you know, um, sarcasm because I think it's actually going to happen. Now we'll have to wait and see, but should those things happen, right? The Dolphins have everything they need to give him, give up. And I just don't think that Steven Ross wants to take that chance. I'm not sure he's, you know, uh, convinced on Tua, although that's his fault for, you know, uh, what I believe to be D Stephen Ross demanding that he go in, um, but certainly it's the Dolphins organ Dolphin organ Dolphin organization's fault for having put him into the fire when he wasn't ready, uh, thereby leaving a bad taste in 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 people's mouths on whether or not he can be the guy. But additionally, he's getting super old and clearly wants to win immediately. That's why he fired Adam Gase a couple years ago, not just for a whole bunch of things that he couldn't control, uh, but also because he said that he wouldn't fucking tank the 2019 season. Um, and then they tanked the 29th season. 2019 season to go get a quarterback but i'm not sure that they're convinced and i think that has a large part of the uh, has a large part to play in why i believe steven ross actually demanded that that move be made and to a be inserted right because then think of the other context right after the 49ers game flora said what's the point in putting Tua in for uh, garbage time when he's not going to do anything just to do it against the jets my belief is is that he did that because steven ross told him no Put him in if that's the case. And I, I guarantee you Steven Ross contacted him and was like, dude, we're blowing the Jets out. Put him in. I want to see this guy. I don't know. I don't have actual proof of that, but that is my guess. Because he's old as fuck, wants to win now, and hasn't been a winner since he's been the majority owner of the Dolphins. He's actually taken this team in a downward trend. But he's getting desperate. That's why he tanked the 2019 season. I believe that's why he demanded Tua go in. And for that same reason, I also believe that he will be willing to give up not just Tua, not just the third overall pick this year, not just the 18th overall pick this year, but an additional up to two first round picks in future drafts as well as even a potential couple second round picks. Right now, there's been a ton of speculation on what a team might have to give up to get Deshaun Watson, you know, um, uh, you know, a, a player with his skill set, his production level, uh, his age, et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. All the, not to mention other context from what's happened with other quarterbacks, although there really is not much precedent for a player at his position with his skill level and his performance output to this point at his age, et cetera, et cetera. So, I do think it is absolutely reasonable that the Texans could not only demand but receive Tua Tagovailoa, the third overall pick, the 18th overall pick, a first round pick from next year, a first round pick from 2023. So that's the third overall pick, the 18th overall pick from 2021. The first overall pick from 2022, the thir first overall pick from 2023, and a second round pick from this year and next year uh, to get Watson. And then, you know, the Texans may also give us, you know, one or two mid, you know, to late round picks or something like that, whatever. Um, but it's going to be, my guess is something along those lines. And I, I have little doubt that the Dolphins would be willing to pay that. Uh, but I think that that would be a massive, massive mistake because, I mean, again, you guys know my philosophy on quarterbacks. It's not a quarterback driven, as much as people like to think that all you need is a quarterback and it's a quarterback driven league, et cetera, et cetera. It's obviously not the case because even great quarterbacks don't win at all, right? Even Deshaun Watson went 4-12 and last year on the Texans team. So despite he personally had a phenomenal year stat-wise, his team still didn't win, right? So it just goes to show you that it doesn't, that it's not just the quarterback. He couldn't do it all himself, right? So uh, anyway, and it's th that won't be the case with the Dolphins either. I promise you that. They're not going to be a 10-6 team next year, even if they do bring in Deshaun Watson, especially, well, 
I'm not going to say especially, but either way, I don't think that they're properly building a team with Tua or around Tua, but I also don't think that they would have, but at least right now they do have resources, at least some resources. I think that they foolishly, unnecessarily blew through their cap space and are going to set themselves up for cap uh, troubles. Uh, because of that but at least draft draft capital wise they do still have uh plenty of resources in that department and actually could offset the cap problems by letting go uh of those you know high pre high priced overpaid free agents um to, to to clear up cap space for younger guys that they draft but clearly they do not you know take the philosophy of build through the draft at least not not so much i mean it wouldn't you wouldn't really indicate that at all they were super big spenders in free agency last year so they've proven uh that that's going to be one of the methods in which they attempt to build their team but also their drafts have been pretty uh trash to this point the first two drafts under this regime has not been good and in fact they've already cut three of them and are you know uh, in very big discussions to trade away their first round pick from this last year, the quarterback, the guy that they fucking sold the farm to get in the first place, tanked their 29 season, etc., etc. And, you know, so it's just a giant fucking mess. I don't think they know what they're doing at all, and I don't think they know how to build a fucking team. So I don't think. I, I, I think that no matter what, they're going to fuck it up. But at least right now, they at least do have some outlet that they could take and they could turn it around by deciding to shift their, 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 their mindset into building through the draft, clearing up cap space, you know, so on and so forth, and then doing things properly. But if they were to trade for Deshaun Watson, then they wouldn't even have the draft capital. They'd have even less cap space and no draft capital. So... Anyway, let's get through this article really quick because I have said a lot about it. It's been speculated for some time, but the Miami Dolphins reportedly will pursue Deshaun Watson if the Houston Texans make their star quarterback available, which I personally believe to be inevitable. Per Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald, the Dolphins expect to be in the mix for Watson if he hits the trade market. Now, obviously, on the one hand, you always got to do your due diligence, and of course, they would be expected on that level, but I very much guarantee that they will be a vehement, aggressive uh, trade partner and will likely get it done because they will give away like a king's ransom to do so. ESPN's Adam Schefter reported last month that Watson formally requested a trade from the Texans. Despite Watson's desire to leave the organization, Houston doesn't appear to be in a hurry to deal the three-time Pro Bowler. Schefter reported on February 7th that Houston is telling teams to, that call to inquire about Watson that he isn't available. Other teams around the NFL have gotten that message, and now they are waiting to see whether the Texans' stance will change. But sources within and around the organization told ESPN that their position will not change, wrote Schefter. And like I said... They can play that hardball right now. And there is certainly, you know, some level of chance and probability uh, that that will remain the case. However, uh, from my evaluation of the situation, uh, Watson absolutely has all the leverage. I mean, 100% he can just not show up. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't care. But the, the Texans are not going to just, you know you know they're just not going to let him they're not going to keep him on the roster if he's not going to be there and play for them right so uh because it's 100 percent a waste even if they can recoup some of the money um you know because of fines and or you know withholding it because he's not there uh it's still losing out on a first round pick and you know your star quarterback so anyway I i'm I feel pretty confident that at some point that's going to change. Speculation about Watson going to Miami increased last week when the uh, when he was photographed in the city with Dolphins players Christian Wilkins and Raekwon Davis. The uh, team has, uh, let's see, the team also has extensive resources to offer the Texans, including two first-round picks this year, number third and 18th overall, and second-year quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. Watson signed a four-year, 156 million contract extension with Houston, Houston last September. The 25-year-old uh, led the league with 4,823 passing yards and set career highs with 33 touchdowns and a 70.2 completion rate. Obviously, again, that wasn't enough to make the Texans a winner. So it's obviously not all about the quarterback. You do need more than just that. But I do think personally it is inevitable that they are going to have to put him up um, at some point. And I do think that the Dolphins, 
should that happen, I do think the Dolphins will be the highest probability location and trade partner for them. Uh, so we will have to wait and see how that plays out. But that's how I see it. That's how I feel about it. And yeah, so with that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspectives. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comments section. And of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.